overall the climate was somewhat warmer would be worse. Mm -hmm. We don't know that. Uh, we do know that toward the equator where the climate is warm all the time, they have less huge violent storms than you get where we live. Why? Because the violence is when the cold and warms collide. Collide. Okay. All right. So if it, if it was more warmth and less cold, there may be less violence. Maybe things would be better, but we don't know. We're only guessing. Here's the another one of the questions of the doctrine of certainty. They say any action is better than none, but is any action really better than none? And they make a funny analogy. You want to read that for us? Sure. Um, the reasoning is that being a skeptic about the prospect of one's own house burning down does not stop us from buying insurance, fire insurance. But if this was a case of buying insurance, the Kyoto Insurance Company would be up on charges of fraud. You would be buying a policy for which it is unclear precisely what is being insured, from which the premiums cost more than the punitive damages, and which does not pay any compensation in the event the damages occur. Would you be willing to buy such a policy for your home or auto? If so, please contact the author. Yeah, they'll sell you one. Sure. So is there some policy that, that we could do? What can we do to stave off mythical future climate change caused by humans? Take no action on something that does not exist. Does it, yeah. So why take action on something we don't know even exists? And then the last question had to do with the motives of critics. Now, that's just an ad hominem argument. Yeah, anybody Against that, the man. Yeah, anybody that doesn't agree with me, they've got to be something bad about them. That, he couldn't be right about it. Look at his shirt. Yeah. Or, you, or you're, you're against this just because you're a greedy industrialist that wants to make more money. You don't care about the little birdies and flowers. Well, as a matter of fact, if I cared about flowers, I would want more carbon dioxide in the air because, as a matter of fact, the more the level of carbon dioxide increases in the Earth's atmosphere, the greener the Earth is, which is another unbelievable irony. People say, I believe in green, so I don't want any carbon dioxide emissions. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking about? If you have more carbon dioxide, the Earth gets more green. What do you think causes plants to grow? Sounds to me, Bob, like, uh, again, we're not thinking critically, we in society. The no, it's, it's just, you know, it's not that people are low in IQ. Some of the people that are hypnotized by this foolishness are people that are a genius in some realm, but people that are subject to being scammed are often very smart people. They're just not thinking critically in some areas of life. When it comes to climate, you turn your brain off. And you just do what you're told. We may as well say, ma, let's follow the, the rest of the group here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what do we do about this? Well, what we do is realize that we aren't the center of the universe that we think we are, that we're all fragile, that life on earth is fragile, but what's threatening it is God's wrath against sin that's going to be poured out in the end times. And what we really need to do is repent and believe the gospel. Jesus said that in Luke 13 when they were talking about these disasters that happened. His answer was this, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. That disaster was the Tower of Siloam? Yeah, the was Tower the and, and the people that were victims of uh, Pilate. Right. Okay. okay. So if you look at a hurricane, you look at a tornado, we're all fragile. We don't know we'll be here tomorrow, but we couldn't know that we'll have eternal life if we repent and believe the gospel and turn our lives over to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So in conclusion to this series, the real problem is that we are putting ourselves in the center of the universe. We're rejecting what God said. When God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, we've decided that God was saying something bad because we believe the neo-pagan people that want to tell us that humans living on earth is something bad for the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's a pagan worldview. And the fact is that the reason God wants humans to multiply over the earth is that those humans are being offered the gospel and some will believe and they will become people who will be citizens of heaven. The new heaven and the new earth. Yes. Well, I think that'll do it for today, Bob. 
I want to thank everyone for joining us. And remember, if anyone would like to visit our church or contact us, it is Twin City Fellowship, again in Minneapolis. Our phone number, 952-935-3100. Again, that's 952-935-3100. And again, we're on the web, www.cicministry.org. For Critical Issues Commentary, this is Todd Kramus. And Bob DeWay. And thanks again, everyone. We'll talk again soon.